Okay, good morning everybody. Welcome to Coffee and Art in the Morning on Dee Dee. I'm a little out of breath. I just ran downstairs, made me a cup of made me a pot of coffee and ran back upstairs. Anyway, so I had some happy mail to show today. And uh, I was just working in this is my current desk journal. I just did a little ske warm up sketch this morning while I was waiting for uh, uh, people to, to get here. And um, so, yeah. Oh, hi, Paula. Thank you. I do make good coffee, don't I? <laughs> uh, so, anyway, I was just working on a little sketch here while I was uh, waiting for some people to get here. This is, uh, and I also want to show happy mail. But I was also talking about maybe just showing some different kinds of journals. Now, I don't mean a journal flip. I mean, I can show you a few pages out of the different journals. But I thought maybe you could just see the different things you can do with a journal. I mean, or just that's, that's not kind of like, oh, we already know that. We've watched 1,569 YouTube videos on journals. But I don't know. I mean, I always... I love seeing like when Paula shows her journals and even if she doesn't do a full flip, she just shows the different ones. I mean, I love that stuff. I do. So I figure if I like it, somebody else has got to like it too. Anyway, but I always try to keep some kind of a journal on my desk to, you know, throw things in, sketch in. Um, there's a little sketch of cam. Um, and just play in, and uh, what else I got in here? Some pose, quick poses, and some different things there. What else? I don't know. It's got a little of everything in there. Little drawings, faces. Um, but I thought it kind of would be kind of fun just to, you know talk about different kinds of journals or what you can do with them or you know whatever I don't know if that's something y'all be interested in or not but this is just like a, it, I, this is my version there's that rabbit that I drew again I redrew him because I wanted to keep him I'm giving the other one away and so I wanted to just sketch it down real quick not that I don't have copies of it same thing for the panda there but anyway what I was going to say is there's just so many different things you can do with journals. Uh, if y'all if y'all are talking to me, please put it in caps, because otherwise I don't know if you're talking to me, Jeannie. <laughs> same for yours, Paula. Same thing. But anyway, um, so the, I try to keep something on the on here. On the desk, in this one, you can see I still have quite a bit of space left in this one. It's pretty thick. It's just a rubber band, band one where I've made signatures with just paper folded in half and made signatures and with the rubber bands. I don't really decorate a lot of the outsides of my journals. I mean, I say that you should or could after you've done them and you put them on the shelf because they look so pretty, but do I ever really actually get around to putting pretty ribbon and beads and hangy offy things? Um, I love that, the way it looks, but I'm usually like, I'm moved on to the next thing already. But I can't really put things like beads and stuff on these journals because I work in them. And if I'm working in them and I'm laying them down like this, the beads and whatever else are just like in the way. And, um, okay, okay, Jeannie, thank you. Yeah, because it's hard for me to, you know, when you're streaming and now that we don't have the Q and colon, up, you can put the heart in there. Like that's what Paula tells people to do is put the heart, the uh, negative sign. The little negative sign and a three will make the heart a red heart appear but um uh, so i i don't know um uh, if you're talking to me you're talking to me well anyway so this is just a journal that i have that i keep on my desk just to throw things i was working on here's something else i was working on here just a um, mixed media thing a couple of different things I don't know it's just whatever if I find some you know leftover something some of the I don't know just whatever it just 
I just call it my my desk journals. And I got tons of these because these are the ones that I just throw things in and play in. And um, so I don't think I have any. There's my there's a picture the one of me where I'm looking up. I want to maybe do an ink drawing of that. What else do I have right here? Just some faces, some poses. And these poses, you can practice these. You can get these online, guys. They're under like, I don't know, two minute poses or something like that. One minute. Just look for time lapse. Look, that's what it is. Look for time lapse poses. And you'll find all kinds of things like that just to practice your drawing. If you can't go like real life drawing things. Um, the napkin journal. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I'll have to see where that one is. I don't know if that one's on the shelf or back in the, on the, you know, pile. I don't want to call it a pile because they're not piles. It's like, it's a shelf on the floor. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like four feet of journals on the floor. I mean, but they're stacked up. So, cause I'm not, a, if I stack, I mean, I have two or three little stacks with maybe four or five journals sideways on my bookshelf. But for the most part, I have to have, I'm a, I like to flip through things rather than piles. If things are piled, I never get to the bottom of the pile. That's like my papers and things. Papers have to be in a tub where I can flip through them like this rather than piles. I'm not good with piles. Anyway, so this is just one of the journals. And it's just got, you know, there's even some things back in here, but mostly I try to, you know, cut, I don't say I go in order because I really don't, but I want to have places where I can continue. So this is my to work in, and then this is pretty much like I've gone through, you know, past all this. Um, and it's like I said, it's just, all this is is chipboard, duct tape, rubber bands, Folded over, I think these are 11 by 14. Yeah, I think these are 11 by 14 pieces of printer paper folded in half with about maybe 10 sheets per signature. I'm not sure. I don't remember how many there are. And uh, so, yeah. So anyway, I was just doing a little sketching this morning. These are just little quick sketches that I'll do. And you can go right over things like, like, this is a leftover stencil thing. You know, you've seen Paula do that a million times where she keeps all her leftover um, stamped off. Not stamped off, but like, you know, you don't want to waste all that precious ink dilutions and things that are on your stencils. So if you just stamp them off on something, you have, um, you have just something on the page. And, and the thing is about something like this, guys, now I do, I'll have to get a chair. Oh, I think Denise, I took my chair to Denise's. Well, I can roll this one over there. I'll show you some. I, I know I've shown you all the insides of a lot of my desk journals, which are usually the small leather bound ones because they hold up so well. The leather bound ones from Barnes and Noble, they hold up well and they're a good size. They're, a little, they're smaller than this. You know, they're probably maybe six by five by six or something like that, but they hold up so well. So I like those for desk journals too. Um, yeah, that's a left, I guess it's a leftover snowflake. I don't remember. Cause if I have, you know, this, some of this is just paper that I might've had somewhere. Um, and, uh, and, and then I just put it in here because I know this is, this is my version of a junk journal without, junky papers. Now I have those too, where you just have bunches of leftover scrapbook papers or magazine things and just junk journals. But for me, more a junk journal is something where I can actually do something in it like this, where it's just, you know, um, uh, let's see here. Uh, I had a couple pictures here. I, I just, I have to grab here. I had them saved before y'all got here. Um, so anyway, maybe if I can find the napkin journal, I can show that one again, Linda. 
but I have different kinds of journals. Let me kind of just look at them and kind of think. All right, so I have things like this that are just like, I say, desk journals, where they sit close by me, where I can, if I had, like, for instance, Lisa had my Happy Mail wrapped in this. Here's a little piece left over, so I might just glue that in. You, you know what I mean? That might just get thrown in there. Or, uh, you know, things like that. Um, let's see, I have, there's this little baby here. Let's just draw this little baby's face right over the top of this, just so I can kind of show you where you can just use all kinds of things. <laughs> well, you can see it on this one where I did my own face over the top of something. Where is it? How far back it was. Oh, there it is. See, there's the compass thing there, leftover compass stencil or mask with ink on it. Um, but anyway, so while I'm just talking and telling you the different kind of journals, uh, there, what you can do with them. And, and I'm not, I've told this y'all this before too. I'm not really a art. I mean, uh, I don't know how to distinguish this. I'm not really, a, I don't journal in these kind of books. Like, I don't write things. I don't, I might put a quote or something like that. But I'm really not a journaler in these kind of books. If I'm writing, I write, and my mollies are piled up over there too. So, But I just write in the plain little moloskinas the molies. If I'm just writing, taking notes or something like that, I write in those. Now I might throw a little art in there or something, but they're not really my sketchbooks, art journals. My sketchbooks are like, like these kind of books. These, these are my sketchbooks. These are not like art journals. <laughs> These are what I'll sketch in, like y'all saw, this one is where I showed y'all all those ones that we did, um, I did on, uh, you know, uh, Sunrise Earth, that kind of thing, or I'll do things like, uh, here's a whole page of cute puppies, here's a page of cute cats, so these are, this is like my sketchbooks, alright, so I actually do drawings, sketches, things like that and ideas in them. So that's a sketchbook as opposed to a jur art journal. In the art journaling, you, you know, I'll do things like, where's that one I just showed y'all a minute ago? Like, um, <clears throat> where'd, it go? where'd it go? Like this. So we're all collage, do mixed media, do more play and this kind of stuff. This is more art journaling type stuff for me, where I'm practicing or collaging or using leftover scrape paint to make something, or if I just want to do a sketch in it or something like this. But, you know, so I have different books for different purposes. And then if I take a book with me, it, it's going to be smaller, usually. If I go out somewhere and sketch, it's going to be a small book. Does that make sense? Any questions on any of that, guys? So I'm just going to sketch right over because this is kind of like so symmetrical right here. There's this little baby face. And so <laughs> you probably won't be able to see it on camera. But uh, it's it's a little baby going, oh, oh, like a little um, open mouth, real cute. <clears throat> And uh, so anyway, <clears throat> so I didn't know, I got to take a sip of coffee here, guys. <clears throat> I didn't know if that would be something y'all want to talk about or look at. Like, all right, so another magazine, <clears throat> I mean, another type of journal is the magazine journal, which, uh, you know, we've shown y'all those before. You take an old magazine or two or three and turn it into uh, turn it into uh, a collaging mixed media or something like that kind of journals. Um, I 
Okay, thanks. You're right, Paul, it does. It, and, you know, it's like she, Paul was saying that the terminology trips people up. And, I, and that's true. I mean, it's like, uh, it, it, you, you can call them different things. Now, I just call them different books with different purposes. You know, you can have a different, uh, a sketchbook, an art journal, um, magazine journal. But I, for me, they're different books for different purposes. So it, it's not that they can't be, and there's no rule about it or anything. You know, there's there's no rule about uh, any of that. Let me see, I want a pencil. that there's not necessarily a rule about, you know, what to do in each one. I just have purposes for each one for, for mostly so that I can find things again. Yeah, and then, so that's, there, there's like Linda was saying, she has books for different techniques she tries. So would you call that an art journal? A sketchbook? What would you call that, Linda? I mean, just out of curiosity. Would you call that an art journal? A sketchbook? Hey, CB. Anybody else coming in? And there's a lag, so I'm just kind of... A creative journal. That's a good one, CB. So anyway, there's just, you know, and, and like Paula said, the, the names can trip you up. But, you know, there's just different things to use for different... Things. Dixie. So I'm just doing a little sketch here, guys, while I was, I started out just by waiting for people to get here. Let's see. Just a little baby face here. No teeth, little gums, no teeth. <laughs> Kind of looks weird with the with the thing on it, doesn't it? <laughs> with the uh, stencil. <laughs> Is it creeping anybody out? <laughs> I don't want it to do that. <laughs> Call an art journal because there are various art products used. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, Paul. Forget the name, just do it. Well, the reason I call them different names is so I can find things. Like I said, the magazine journal, the, the uh, what do you call it, um, um, napkin journal where we, you know, napkins. So I do kind of sometimes have specific purposes for specific um, types. Two. 
Oh yeah, for for new. Okay, I see what you're saying. For people that don't um, don't know what you're talking about, yeah, to have specific ones. Yeah, gotcha. So anyway, let me just finish these lies, and I'll we'll move on. I'll just kind of. I guess I should shouldn't have hit record till I was ready to actually do the everything else. I'll just I'm just playing around here but anyway so we drew a little do a little old man a little while ago all right so let me start with happy mail let me move this to the side move these journals off okay so well then let's just go ahead and I'll tell you that real quick this one is like my desk your current desk journal which sits somewhere usually close by for me to work on sketchbooks are things like where I'll do you know sketches whether it be here or whatever uh, usually I don't take something out this big let me get my light back here somehow uh, I usually don't take something out this big when I go out to draw just because it's cumbersome I'll take something probably about half this size if uh, I'm gonna go out and, and draw somewhere and then the same thing for these are these are just ones that I showed y'all that I did on different uh, I already showed did a flip of this on the sunrise earth which by the way sunrise earth is on youtube so if you want to practice drawing scenery in kind of a from a way far away to close 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 uh, that that's a good uh, uh channel to do that from and also look up time lapse poses um if you want to draw figures in like one two minutes just to do quick gesture drawings like um, let's see here. you know just quick ones like this kind of thing just real quick um, I don't know I don't have that many right here in this one so something like that look up time-lapse all right so for the happy mail Uh, yeah, we don't have the Q and colon anymore, so we put a negative sign and a three. We'll make a red heart, or just put it in caps so that I can see it. All right, so first off, I want to show this card that Eileen made. I love this card. It was just so sweet. Eileen, I love Eileen's cards, and everybody that's birthdays in the next November and probably through December, uh, you will be getting a card that was made by Eileen. I, I'll sign them for her if she doesn't. <laughs> But uh, anyway, so her envelope, let me cover up the, uh, her envelope had a big spider web on the front and a little witchy thing on the back. I hope she wasn't trying to tell me anything, Eileen. <laughs> but the card, oh, I just cracked a nail. The card is so cute. Look at this. This is all, look at the dimension of that. The little raven, the nevermore, that's all dimensional. There's a little skull, a little uh, pumpkin, but all that's dimensional. Little spiders walking across there, little dots. Isn't that so cute? And then Linda's cards, she has a lot of ones that are like... Um, uh, generic that can go for birthdays or other things so like if you have a get well or a thinking of you then I have some Linda cards for that so <clears throat> excuse me again 
anyway, so thank you, Linda and Eileen, for sending so many cool cards for uh, everybody. I know. I just loved it, too. It's so cute. A little string. I mean, it's got a little, like, a little wire thing holding it. And I mean, it's just everything. It's just adorable. So thank you, Eileen. She just sent that to me. All right. Then I got a nice little card from, and I'll cover up the address, but it was just a little thank you card. And uh, it was from Miss Peeper. Miss Peeper. I love saying that. Now, Miss Peeper doesn't get to be here very, as often as she says she'd like. She's um she's busy and can't get on the live ones. She does watch the recordings. And she sent me some money for postage, which is so sweet. She goes, I know it gets expensive for giveaways and stuff, so here's some money for some postage, which was so sweet. Thank you, Miss Peeper. But look at the card. Look. It's a whole little scene there. Can you see the mountains and and I don't know if she meant it that way, but that's what I see in it. Look, look, you can see the big mountains back there. <clears throat> Close up with the rocks. I know. Hey, Carrie, how's mom? Hope she's better or okay. I mean, I know it takes a while to get over that, but I mean, I hope she's at least okay. So, are you still at her house? No, I don't know if it's a jelly print. It it almost, you know what I think it is? I think it's a, the crayon technique. That's what it feels like. She didn't say, but that's what it feels like. It feels like the melted crayon technique. Can you kind of see that? And I don't know if it all is. It looks like maybe paint and then crayon on the top. You know, I don't know. She didn't say. But isn't it cool? It could be encaustic wax. It could be the melted crayon like Martha does. I don't know. But it's it kind of feels kind of waxy. But not all of it. Like, it could be a combination. Hey, Packer Die. I think, yeah, Linda, I think so. And then Lisa sent me, I have not broken it out of its little home. <laughs> but she uh, talked about the, the parallel pen. Now, I've seen them used. It's been years. I mean, like, since, like, way back years. Since I've even heard anybody mention a parallel pen. Uh, I believe that a lot of, uh, like, it's used more in drafting. And I don't know if Lisa got back in. She was having trouble staying in the chat because I'm not sure if she's still at the farm or not. So I'm not sure if uh, she's... Okay, thanks, Carrie. I'm glad that, I hope she's okay or doing better anyway. And Ellie, too. I just saw the things on uh, little Ellie. So good to have you here, Packer Die, too. So it came wrapped in the this cool tissue, which has got birds and bird cages. And she had that wrapped in a little thing. So it's the Pilot Parallel Pen. And she sent the Mixable Color... 12 cartridges assorted colors so it's it i'm thinking it's like the you know fountain pen where you can put in uh cartridges like uh i haven't taken it apart yet so we're gonna look at it together like you know these kind of calligraphy pens sorry guys i bumped the camera with my head where like this where you have the cartridges of course this one is empty but just to show you what I'm talking about I'm thinking it's like that with the different inks and it comes with a nib cleaner and a mixable color so I haven't used one you think with all the different kind of pens I used not that I've never I've, I've seen it but it's just been years uh, all right, so let's open her up and see where's the opening. Hang on, guys. I'm just going to try to open it like how the box would open, but I'm not. Okay, it's glued on the side here. 
Hmm. Odd. There's no... I guess I'm not supposed to get in it, Lisa. I guess i got to go in on the side. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to tear up the box, but seriously, there's no place to get in. Right there, maybe? Hmm. I can't get in the box. <laughs> Let's see if I can cut, it, uh, cut open where the glue is right there without cutting myself. I can't get in the thing. Really? I mean, that is odd. There's no... I'll just cut it myself. Cut my own open. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've got in exacto right here. All right, here we go. We're making progress. <laughs> okay, I know. Some things... My hubs has a funny thing of saying, I mean, because, you know, we're not, we're not, you know, we're not ancient, but we're not like 20 years old. And we'll try to get into, I mean, the simplest package, like just something you should be able just to tear or used to be able to just tear open. He'll say stuff like, what do old people do? I said, they keep these scissors handy. <laughs> All right, here we go. So. I'm not sure what all the parts are. And I'm not sure if y'all want to sit here and listen to me read instructions. But maybe I should have done this beforehand. All right, here's two inks right there. Let's see what the these look like. Okay, they're the same as those, just different colors. And when they say mixable, how I'm not sure how you're supposed to mix them. I don't know if they're just little cartridges. I don't know. I don't know yet. All right. All right. So let's see what we got. Here's the pen. There's the cap. And it's, uh, you know, got the double tip nib. And uh, let's see. What else we got here? I'm not sure what this is. It's a squishy. don't know what that is. We'll see. And then here's the cap. So you can see. It's going to be fun, I'm telling you, once I learn how to do I mean, once I use it. So you can kind of see here what it does, right? Well, maybe not. Okay. Let's see if it gives you any better. Oh, look at all the, look at all the stuff they give you to try out with it. So basically what it is, it's kind of like, um, it's, it's a calligraphy pen, but it's, the nib is like, um, well, I can't really, it's kind of, it's a little different. It's flat and it's got like, um, um, a double, double flow, if you will. And you, it's so tiny, you can't really see it. But in, instead of just having one little ink uh, line where the ink comes out as two. So let's see if there's anything I need to know. Let's see, do they have, they didn't, of course, I'm sure there's no ink in it yet. Okay, so let's put some in it. Should I be reading instructions? I think that this just goes in like that. And if it's like the other ones I have, when you, when you twist this on, it pops the little thing there. Let me make sure. <laughs> I don't want to. Oh, okay. So this is a converter for cleaning the pen. Okay, well, I am doing this right. So we just pop that in. All right, so let's see what happens. Lisa, where are you? Uh, all right, so I got some ink in there. Let me get something to write on here. Let's just pull the desk journal over here. Now, we've got to get something other than white because you know how the camera is with that. All right, so now let's we got to get it to flow. It's, it's so flat, it's hard to tell my eyes which side the pin flows from. I think it's this side. I hate to shake it. Oh, I think we're supposed, are we supposed to dip it? No, that's to wash it. Okay, hang on guys. It's gonna take me a second because the writing is so little. Dip 
Okay, go. I got the pin in there. After inserting the cartridge, squeeze the cartridge. Oh, okay. I got to squeeze the cartridge to get it going. So let me open it back up. Squeeze the cartridge. Oh, I see it flowing in there. I don't want to overdo. Looks like it's going in there. There we go. Okay. All right. We're we're cooking with ink now. You like these pens? I've not tried one of the parallel pens. I mean, it you know, it's it's got uh, double action in there. It writes really smooth. All right, let's do something real quick here. So smooth. I like it. I have no, I don't have any lines or anything, so I'm just kind of. I like it, Lisa. Tell I'm kind of out of practice. <laughs> it's kind of wonky, but there you go. Thank you, Lisa. I'm anxious to you know play with it more. Here's what I like about it: it's so smooth. I mean, I've got you know a gazillion kinds of calligraphy pens and nibs. Whoa! Come back, come back here. But this one is writing so smooth. I know. Let's see if I write. It. it writes both ways. I guess maybe that's why it's called parallel. Does it write? Because it writes both ways, Lisa. I mean, you can write it this way, and you turn it over, and it writes the other way. It's because it's got a double flow. You, I, I and mean, it's real hard for me to see because of my eyes. But it's got like a double flow thing. That's probably why it's called parallel pen, right? Who makes this? It's a pilot. Here's the little kit here. And pilot parallel pen. I don't know why I've never tried one. And this is the different colored inks. Just like I said, that come, you know, when you buy, you know, these kind of pens. Which I don't really use these that much. You know, it depends on what size of, you know, project I'm doing. I'll just use a regular dip pen, you know, where I dip it in because I've got all the ink, uh, bottles of ink to use. But I like this. It's so smooth, Lisa. And it does write even when I, I mean, I, I'm keeping it at the right angle, but I'm just trying to see what it does. I'm just playing with what it does. I mean, it's, it's making good, like, uh, curve strokes, too. Can you see that? <laughs> Yeah, Lisa, I don't know, Lisa didn't say where she got it, but I'm sure you can get it at any art store. And then, of course, they have all the different alphabets, which I've got tons of calligraphy books. But, oh, I like how they've got a little envelope there. That's cute. Yeah. All right, let me practice my name here. Got a little something there. Got a little picked up a piece of fur or fuzz. See, it does really good curves. Usually, when you have a, a calligraphy nib, it's not that easy to do that kind of thing. Hobby Lobby is where you grab the one you got, Lisa. I mean, Lucy. 
So anyway, guys, thank you. I don't know if Lisa, Lisa's been having trouble getting in this morning. I think she's still on the farm. I'm just kind of playing now. Can't stop. See, it does great curves. I love that. It can go right around. a. Usually you can't do very good circles. <laughs> you know, with just a nib. Maybe we all need one. <laughs> oh, so thank you, Lisa. <laughs> um, it's a two point. Let me see. What was it? Hang on, guys, because i got to search this out, my eyes being what they are here. It says it on the box. Hmm. I saw it somewhere. It said two-something. Hmm. I have to look through three different languages, you know. Um, sorry, I'm not seeing it. I saw it somewhere when I first opened it, I thought. Okay, here's a little chart. It's a 2.4. Because there's a little chart of the different ones you can get. It's a it's a two point four, okay. It's not on the box. I looked on the box. Yeah. Oh, there it is, right there. Good grief! It's on the sticker. Well, anyway, we found it out by the chart. It's a two point four. <laughs> it's a two point four. <laughs> anyway, guys, so that's gonna be fun. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> Oh, hey, Deb. Oh, she can't hear me. She's got a commercial. Anyway, guys, so yeah. Isn't that, isn't that cool? It's And I like the ink is really nice and black. I'm sure they've improved the ink quality since they came out with these Schaefer ones back in the day. I mean, these things, I mean, these are old, guys. A couple of these I've had. I think this blue one is probably 25 years old. At least 25 years old. Maybe 30. I don't mean, these things, this is old. It comes with three different nibs that you can uh, unscrew and put and change out. And um, so what I did when I was in the calligraphy guilds and things is I, back in the day, I mean, you know, when we do our practicing, rather than change out all the different nibs, um, I have a red one in here too somewhere. Rather than change out all the different nibs, I would just have one for each different size. And, uh, but now when I do calligraphy, I, you know, I just use these kind of dip pens, you know, dip in my, in my, uh, ink like that. So, and uh, yeah, no, CB, I'm older than you think. Um, then, let me, I showed this before. Let me see if I can reach over here and get it. that uh, Queen Pam made me this little out of um, a corrugate. It's a little pen nib holder. Let me, so I put, I didn't put every single nib I had in there, but let me put the lid back on this here so it doesn't dry out. Isn't that cool, guys? I really like that. Thank you so much, Lisa. She said I was gonna have fun with it. She's on her little note. Um, isn't it amazing? <laughs> I try to keep things within arm's reach. All right. So anyway, Queen Pam made this and it's out of chipboard covered with, covered with like a paper, a scrapbook paper of some kind. And then everything's duct taped. I mean, uh, packing taped. And then she has little magnets that, 
so it snaps shut. But it what it is is a bunch of layers of corrugate to make like a little book. And in the corrugate, <clears throat> you can stick. <coughs> I'll have to go get some more coffee here, guys. You can put the pin nibs and see they're at different levels. See the different. I'm trying to get it so you can see. I do have a picture of this on Twitter. Can you see? And then what it is is because it's corrugate down in there, your little nibs just fit down in those little holes like that. Isn't that cool? And she said she got this idea off someone off of Pinterest. She said, it's not my original idea, but uh, she, she made me one. So isn't that cool? I know. She should sell them. Well, I think... I don't know. Maybe she said she did at one time. I don't know if she still does. But, uh, yeah. So, anyway. I keep the my extra nibs in there. I used to just keep them in this little cigar box like this. <clears throat> you know, little the nibs in here. So, I put most of them in there. And then I got some other ones put away. And then, of course, I have all the ones that I use a lot in the actual pens themselves. All right, so I'm going to run down and get some coffee real quick, guys. Thank you so much, Lisa. I'm really excited about this. Now that I figured out how to use it and with the different colors, and then of course you have to clean. It's like the it's just like these kind here. So after if you want to change the colors of your uh you know, change the colors of your cartridges, you have to take this and run it under water. And just, it, the water will flush out the barrel of the pen. And I'm sure that's probably how this works too. If I want to change colors. And this one has 12 colors. That's so cool. Look at all the little colors there. Actually, I do have a Mary Poppins carpet bag. I do have one. <laughs> That's funny. I really, I really do. I really have a Mary Poppins carpet bag. <laughs> like when I go to Denise's and things. No, uh, I have a thir nice thirty-one bag that Denise bought me. But she, she knows she, when she gave it to me, she knew I was going to use it for Her Majesty Camille, because Camille, my cameo silhouette, fits perfectly in my thirty-one bag. So I don't use that one for traveling back and forth to Denise's. Now it's, it's. It's Camille's permanent home <laughs> so that she can lay in there protected with a towel over the top of her. <laughs> anyway, okay, so let me go uh, run get some coffee. Let me just move some of this off. Thanks again, Lisa and Miss Peeper and Eileen for the beautiful card. Um, let me put that back there so I don't forget that. And I will give me about two or three minutes. I'll just leave this thank you, Lisa, here for a minute. Um, you've been gluing your nibs into. Now, I do have nibs that um, you can get craft nibs. I mean, and when I say craft nibs, they are really workable nibs. Although, I think even Tim Holt sells some to, for crafting. And I haven't tried to actually use the nibs, but they look like they're perfectly good nibs. Now, I'm sure they're not the best in the world. I mean, if he's selling them for 10 for a, you know, whatever, in a pack, craft pack. But yeah, I do actually use some nibs in uh, projects as well. But these nibs are like my old friends. And you, you, they're not as clean as they probably should be. Oh, my light went away here. But um, yeah, there I've had some of these pins for forever. This one has a cork, uh, a cork piece on it to soak up so your fingers don't get too inky. Why is my light? There we go. Um, that's a cork right there, and I don't even think it's absorbent anymore. It's so coated with ink. But yeah. All right, guys, let me run downstairs and get some coffee. And then if you want, we can do, 
you know, uh, we can draw some more sketches. We can talk about different art journals that, you know, what we use them for. Linda mentioned my napkin journal. If I can put my hands on it, because it's the same thing that happened last time. She goes, oh, let's see the napkin journal. And I couldn't find it. And it was in the four feet of journal and not on my full shelf over here. So if I can put my hands on it. But what I thought I'd do is maybe we could just talk about different types of journals if you want. Especially with Paula here. Is Paula still here? <laughs> she's the, she's the uh, I call her pretty much the art journal queen. I mean, if anybody has done every kind of art journal in the world, it's probably Paula. Now she'll go, oh no, because you know, she's kind of modest that way. But seriously, she has probably done every kind of art journal. Now I've done every kind of sketchbook every kind of uh, drawing type of book. But as far as art journals, I've got hundreds of them, but pa pa Paula probably has thousands. I mean, she could just like whip those babies out. She's got a different one every week. So, oh, and by the way, I'll just give her a shout out here. If y'all do not watch Journal Artista, she's on Wednesday nights at nine and Saturday nights at nine. Now, this coming Saturday night, she's probably uh, won't be doing a show, but maybe she'll be doing one Wednesday night. So, uh, and, and I'm recording this Monday, early Monday morning. So, okay, let me go run some coffee. Then we'll brag about some more, y'all, in a minute. Okay, so anyway, it was a busy, had a busy Saturday. Well, actually, just, you know, lots of things going on over the weekend. Denise had her booth. If y'all don't know, my daughter is a real estate agent. She had her own booth at the, it's called the Moonshine Festival. Someone commented on Twitter, a moonshine festival with all those kids? Maybe it was Linda. I don't remember. No, I don't think it was Linda. Anyway, but I didn't see a drop of moonshine. Uh, that's just what they called it. But anyway, basically, the main point of it, I believe, is the car show. They have hundreds, and I mean hundreds, of amazing old cars restored. And it's like, where all the car, sorry guys, I'm out of breath, ran downstairs, up and downstairs again. Um, I don't, let's see, they're on my phone. I did tweet some pictures out, and also on Facebook, if you follow me on Facebook or Twitter, I did post them, but I'll kind of try to show you a couple here, because but they're on my phone, not my iPad. But I'll try to just do a quick little flip here of some of the cars. So they're all these vintage cars. Not all of them are vintage, but most of them were. There we go. And they all of them had the hoods open so you could see the engines and everything in them. And they're just amazing. That's a pink Thunderbird. So you can kind of see. There are just hundreds, and, and you're not seeing the beautiful colors on these. They're just amazing colors. Like that's a lime green, and that's a turquoise. You can't see it. 
But anyway, so we went up there and Denise had a booth and me and Hubster and and Denise and one of her business partners and their and the and the kids and and so we had a great time. But it was we had to leave here at like we had to get up at four thirty to leave because she we had to be at her house at seven. And so it was a it was a hectic day. We finally got home back home through Atlanta traffic, like at six thirty seven something like that. You like seeing the cars? Yeah, they're cool. They're cool to see them all. It wasn't you on Twitter. Yes, it sounds like you're smart, Audrey Mark. <laughs> I don't remember. It was. It didn't come across as really smart, Alec, to me. It was like funny, being funny, and you're the one that's usually funny, Linda. So I was giving you credit for the funny, but I don't remember who said it. It was Jonna. Oh, it was Jonna. Okay. So anyway, it was a uh, it was a busy uh, day. All right. So now, do y'all want to do that? We can do some sketching. We can just do gabbing and talking. <laughs> we can or talk, you know, show a different few different kinds of journals if you want to see that. Uh, it's up to y'all. Uh, you know, I sometimes I think, well, you know, most of y'all that are here all the time have seen all my journals. Now, I'm like Paula. It seems like she has a new one every week. I don't know where she like. She has a she like. I have my artwork in my closet here. I have old artwork like feet and feet and feet of artwork. I think Paula has stashes of journals. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, she and she worked at Saturday to us and Sunday. It was a whole weekend for her. And uh and so it was it, she had a busy day. I haven't talked I didn't I don't even think I talked to her yesterday. I didn't talk to her yesterday. She hasn't called this morning. She's probably sleeping in, bless her heart. Get the kids on the bus and go back to bed. Anyway, all right. So I do have a couple, you know, I do have some commission things I'm working on, but I don't show those and I don't work on those during the show. Um, I just wait until I, they're done. Because, so I basically, this is how I feel about my commissions. Not anybody, if anybody does commission work, don't email me. I don't care what y'all do with your stuff. I'm just saying for me, when I do my, especially my pet portraits, and a lot of them are uh, you know, memorials. You know, I like the person that is getting the portrait to be the first one to see it. You know, after that, you know, I'll, I'll put it on Facebook and Twitter and stuff and show everybody. But um, I, I like the person that I'm doing the commission for to be the first person that actually gets to see it. And uh, so also I'll just give myself a little commercial here. If y'all do want any pet portraits, you know, email me, tweet me, Facebook me or whatever, especially if you want anything done by Christmas um, for gifts or anything. If you want memorial pet portraits, and I do people portraits too. Um, but I think that most people, are just they like their pets. They like their pet portraits. Anyway, so um, just get with me. And uh, and we'll talk. Okay, so that's because you really well you you have but that your pages look finished, Paula. Even if you don't really finish every one, I don't finish every book either. Let me just grab one of my desk journals to kind of show you here. And I've got to roll my oops, I've got to roll my chair over because I had I left the other my little portable chair folding chair with Denise at the booth. So I've got to climb up here on my, I'll just pull a couple of them down to kind of show you just this. This is, these are other versions of my desk journal. Like I said, right now, this is what I'm using for a desk journal. I'm going to keep my pen in there so I don't, I want to practice some more on it. And this one is just rubber banded, uh, I'd say 60 weight paper maybe 60 weight no it's not even that it's a little thicker than printer paper but i don't know i don't remember when i have stacks of paper and i just grab and fold and then it's just uh, rubber banded into the chipboard duct tape chipboard chipboard covered with the uh, scrapbook paper and that's pretty much the whole dealio on this all right so 
I'll use something like that or something like these. These are my favorite desk journals to use. I gotta catch my breath again. Um, they're the ones that you get at Barnes and Noble. They're Italian leather. It's real leather, and they're like forty bucks each. But they last a couple of months if I'm diligent in using them. And uh, so I have a lot of these. I probably have, I don't know, eight. I'm not sure. And um, some I've even cut apart. <laughs> I've even cut cut them apart, taken the leather off of them, and used the journals for other things. So, um, hey, sister woman, we were just talking about you. So these are the kind that I leave on my desk and collage, throw things in. And you can see right here, here's a section right there that is, it's got a few things glued in there, but pretty much that little bit right there is not used. Uh, another thing, if you're not particular about order and dating or anything like that, which on the, in this case of these kind of journals, I am not. I, like I said, because I'm not like doing diary type journaling along with my art journaling, then it doesn't really matter to me if if any of these pages are in any kind of order because I'm going back and forth between them for one thing. So if I'm working on a page and I have some extra ink or something and I throw it in there and then some collage and then I might go on and do something else and I might come back. So I, it, it, it could be a lot of a variety of things, but it's a lot of leftovers. It's a lot of leftovers. And then if I come across something, I think, oh, I really like the way that turned out. I might work on it a little further and finish it up with some paint. If I'm just sitting here or something thinking or strategizing or planning or something, then I might just get out some paint and keep playing on that page. But I don't feel obligated to finish a page like this every single page. Sometimes, some journals, some months, I do more than others. Uh, it just depends on what, you know, whatever. But my point of showing you this one was, is there's a section right here that it's not done. There's like maybe, I don't know, there's, I think there's like 200 pages in one of these books. So it's probably about 20, 20 pages right there that are not done. And um, so if this will just be, and oh, the other thing I was going to say is you want to work because they're not dated in any kind of fashion. Uh, you want to work back and forth when you're working in, in something this thick, when you're doing this much bulk, adding lots of paint and paper and matte medium and all that, then you want to work back and forth so that you're not so much this particular one, because these are really well made, but a lot of times, like the magazine journals, if you don't work back and front, back and front, back and front, your spine will start going like that and warping. Okay? It doesn't happen as much with these because they're so well made, and they're just so nice to touch. Um, back when I did more, I did some, well, I won't get into the whole gaming thing, but I would keep all my notes in these kind of journals just because I love the way they felt. So, um, Anyway, so there's just all kinds, and they'll sound like they're sticking, but they're really not sticking because I use craft paint and, and ink. Like this is Dilutions right here, I can tell. That's some Dilution. No, that's, a, that's my dark ink pad there in the pink. And uh, so I'm not using heavy body, heavy body acrylic. If you use heavy body acrylic, it you can get uh, some you know some brands depending on the brand. You can get real vibrant colors, but your pages are more apt to stick unless you wax them or uh, varnish them or something so that they don't stick. But none of these pages. The only journal that I ever varnished was my collage journal, my Dina Reevely, Diane Diane Reevely. This one, I won't show it. I won't show it again because I've shown it a gazillion times. But this journal here, the one with the strap, and it comes with the the, the pocket on the inside here, and it lays like that. Well, this this is the only journal that I've ever varnished the pages in. You can see the shine. I put a gloss varnish on these. This is the only one I've ever, and I was kind of hesitant. I did a couple pages to make sure they weren't going to stick, and they did not. So 
if you are doing something with heavy body, I would recommend varnishing them. Now, I use gloss. You could use matte. I'm sure it doesn't really matter as far as that goes. But I was real surprised. I was really happy and surprised that these the pages do not stick um, with when they're varnished. Okay, so you can see I still have a ways to go in this one, but I am determined to finish it. I have them. Most of these are started, and then all these are finished right here. But I've already done a flip on this, so I won't do that right now. But that this one I just call my collage mixed media journal. And, and the pages are varnished. None of these other journals that I've done have I ever tried to varnish them because I really have never needed to because they're craft paint, they don't stick. Okay, any questions or anything so far? Or are y'all just like, okay, Dee Dee, you know. <laughs> All right, so it, and for something like this, for instance, I glued down this little piece of some rock right here. This is leftover scraped paint. And so that just, this little piece of rock here just made me want to do a whole landscape. So the rest of this is all like um, just craft paint. And I just turned it into a little landscape. Now some things are just, here's a, a little doodle ink doodle tree it's it does this is not rhyme or reason it's just whatever it's just whatever in this and so you can kind of see um you know where i've turned some things into landscapes like this and some things are just glued down here's another landscape that i did so let me see here what the collage part is this piece of blue is collage this is a piece of jewelry right there, that blue right there. I, this might be part of the same thing. It's some kind of the jewelry. And this watch part right here. Oh, am I off camera? And that's a watch part. The rest is all scraped paint and, and uh, turned into just a, like a couple of different little landscapes and worlds. Okay. This is like just some scraped paint to make a little mountain, some clouds with some... Uh, white paint. I have a little yellow moon uh, popping out there. Another, you know, so anyway, you can just, you can go this far with your junk that you glue in, or you can stop it just, you know, whatever. And some of this I might go back. Some, you know, I, I don't have a tendency to really, once I've got this much in a book and just a few pages left, it's like I'm ready to move on. And uh, so you can kind of see, here's a piece of napkin right there. Those two flowers are napkins. Speaking of the napkin journal, I haven't forgotten you, Linda. <laughs> so you can see that a lot of, it's just whatever. Like here's just a, I like those uh, pink leggings. And I love the pink and white candy stripe. And I just liked it with these flowers. So now it's going to sound like that's sticking, but it's really not. It's just that these are piled up on top of the top shelf. And they get, you know, when I have them like stacked real tight together, they kind of sound like they're sticking, but they're really not. So um, nothing's coming off, in other words. It's just that they've been stuck setting up on the shelf for a while. So you can, there's a napkin. Let's see if I'm just going to try to find something else that had more done on it. Here's just some Dinah Reevely sprays in there. Um, oh, here's another landscape. There's another one right here. You can see here's the leftover stencil paint. So here's some different ones that I've done more with. There's another landscape. So it's just can be whatever. Okay, so that's, oh, there's my whirling dervishes. Hubster calls me a whirling dervish and, and Noodle calls me whirly gig. <laughs> but anyway, I love that picture. I think I got it out of a Nat Geo. It's an old, old picture, like from the 50s or something. I love that picture. And, uh, so there's just more inks and collage bits. And then here's the section where I really didn't do anything. And then come back over here. And then I have more stuff done so it's just whatever you know it's just to have a little place it's a place to put things 
and then you can continue on and paint on it like I did here just depending on, on your mood <laughs> here's some more kind of more farther along pages and I, I don't even remember which one of these two of, I just grabbed two of the stack which of these are the older ones but um, I like this one here another bird so just different collages and different mixed media there's my carved bee right there and so I'll just take something like a piece of architecture this is a piece of architecture here there's my carved bee that's just a stamp and then just play and blend and she just looked this this looked like what she was wearing it just looked like it went together it was such a cool idea of the architecture and her like armor dress so I just put them together and then it just looked the whole thing just kind of went it just happens like that with me and collage i just love collage and mixed media for that reason and then this one i this was a cool story i had cut out a pop of this girl's face and i just threw it down on the magazine and it fell right on top of his face and they it looked like it was just it was a happy accident when i threw one face down on top of the other and look how perfectly that worked I just love that I mean that's just I just love when stuff like ha that happens this one I call ponytails because you know a pony and the tail that looks like his tail you know her hair there so I glued those two things together so th that's just the kind of things that I love there's a hand catching So that's this one, and then this one is basically the same type of thing. And y'all know that Mona Lisa is my muse, so I, I try to put her in every book I do in some way. So let's just kind of see what I got in this one. There's Leonardo. <clears throat> so these are just the same type of thing here where I might put a word or two or something comes to me or a quote or something like this right here is just a little thing that says fragile handle with care and it just went with butterfly wings so you know I'll, I'll throw in some words every now and then but for the most part it's just it's just these are like I said my desk journal this is a photograph I took at the no it's a, called Noah's Ark it's like our our animal rescue place that's local and uh, the, they have the peacocks there that day and so I took some great peacock pictures there hi HD anyone else I missed I don't have the chat list popped out so forgive me if I don't say hi to you they also had these giant turtles there these things are like, I mean, you can't even see how big my arms are. These things are huge. They're probably three feet across, three feet, you know, e either way. They're huge. They're tortoises. They're not turtles. I mean, they have to be 100 years old if they're a day. I mean, so these are just a couple other pictures that I just stuck in there because I like them, you know. So you can just kind of see just different these are napkins right there that's a napkin a little pocket there there's a that stencil <laughs> Linda that spiderweb stencil and that's a napkin so anyway guys I know you've probably seen that's one of my hand carved stamps there you've probably seen most of this a gazillion times but I'll just do a little quick little I like this one too because I put um, metallics on it 
and it made it like glow. I just love the metallics on this one. So this is one thing you can do with your journals is just keep something handy. I'm just gonna flip through here. Um, keep something handy to throw things like this in, whether it be collaging, paint, stencils, uh, jelly plate, white off, you know, uh, rub offs or whatever. Um, this one I did a little tree and so. And, you know, it's just, uh, there's a picture, an old picture of Boo. It can just be a little of anything and everything. And then, um, if nothing else, they're, they're good for ideas. So these are what I call desk journals. And like I said, this is the one that I'm using currently. And I've got about that much more to go, you know, before I move on to something else. All right. Uh, I don't know if y'all want to see the magazine journals again because we just kind of did one of those. I'll just show you briefly just to show you what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen or, I mean, I won't go through them. These are my magazine journals. Let's see, I'll put this top one. This is just a sketchbook here. These are magazine journals, and you can see I have a new one, sort of new one, started right there. All right, so let me move this. These two are full, and what they are, are these are two magazines glued together, and I call it reverse collaging, and basically what it is is you're taking away what you don't want on a picture, and then I got, this is a new one, I just put three together, and then that's just another one there. So <clears throat> I've shown these two multiple times. It's like I said, this is a new one where I got two magazine or three magazines ready to go. Let me throw this back up on the shelf. Let me know now, guys, if y'all want me to start doing something else, drawing or something. In the meantime, I'm just giving y'all some, trying to give y'all some different ideas for what to use for journals. What you do with them is totally up to you and what you like to do, whether it's mixed media, painting, stenciling, collaging, drawing, sketching, whatever. It's, it's up to you what you do with them, but I'm just kind of showing you different ways and what you can do with different journals. I can't no way show you the hundreds that I have, but I'm trying to show you a variety of different kinds without getting like crazy flipping here. Okay, so this is a kind, th these are what I call magazine journals, and what they are is where you take, uh, I'm trying to get, here's a good example. This heart was already in the magazine. I added paper, paint, and other things, and I white it out, white out being uh, just meaning that I've got rid of the text. When I say white out, it could be yellow, black, blue, any color but it just means that I've got rid of the text and any parts of the pictures that I don't want. And so, and it, again, it's just acrylic paint, so if you just use the craft paint I mean, and I mostly use Americana, but you can use others, but it's just the craft paint. It's not the tubed paint. It's not like, it's not like this. I mean, it's not like this kind. And I just grabbed three different kinds here. It's not this kind of paint. These can make your pages stick unless you do something to prevent, you know, waxing it or varnishing it or whatever. So, and besides, these are for, these are also good if you are a writer, a journaler. Now, you have to find pens, like a ballpoint pen is the best, just a plain old big pen. Those go over acrylic paint fine but Sharpies will dry out within five strokes. Um, you know, you have to find a pen that won't wear out over acrylic paint. But these kind of magazine journals, because you have so much leftover space, these are great for journaling if you are a journal writer. All right, let me pop out my chat here, guys, because my scrolling didn't scroll. I can see that. Let's see here. Okay. Lucy Jane said she bought a couple of magazines to try this with. 
Well, and, and here's the thing. I do not use my Somerset Studio, my Art Journaling. The, those are the two magazines that I buy faithfully and do not, I don't even tear the free papers out of. <laughs> but other Somerset, like Somerset Life, Somerset Blogging, and I don't buy those on a regular basis, but if I do have, those are the ones that I'll use for uh, magazine journals. But if you're a gardener or like if you like home decorating, you know, your home and garden, uh, you know, whatever kind of magazine you like. The point is, is to find something visually stimulating to you because you won't want to do a whole magazine, let alone two or three glued together. <laughs> if you don't like the images that are there okay so you can do things like this but then don't feel like you can't add things to it you can go back and collage more in this is a piece of scrapbook paper here you can you can just add tons of other things to these journals and uh, there's a section right there that's not done so you can just add tons of things in it and then also um, write in them if you want. All right. So they're fun to do, but the, the best tip I can give you for doing a magazine journal is work it front to back. Because you can see, see how that warped that second book? that second magazine there, see how it's turned in? It's because I didn't go enough front to back, front to back, front to back. And if you just go all the way front to back one way, by the time you get to the second magazine, your, your spine's going to warp like that. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so there's some stenciling on there. There's some stamping. So you can just do whatever. Uh, and the other thing that I like to do, I think I, I did it more on the other one than this one, is uh, I did a lot. Here's where I just hand wrote some words with uh, what I just did this with. Um, let me find one. Uh, uh, you know, uh, hmm. like with the um, the dropper. I can't find my black one right off hand right there, but just writing with the dropper. like kind of say just with the with the dropper kind of squeeze it out a little bit um, but anyway here's another one that I did that with imagination so I kind of played with that let me just set this one aside now to dry this one I think is where I did a lot of, yeah this one I did a lot of inking around the edges with my dar inks so anyway so that's magazine journals now the, you can also do a lot with let me show you a few of my composition books here here are a few of my composition book journals now these are not fluffy and fluffette <laughs> but they're the same type of thing where you can play let me see how what I can show you here something like um, and it's kind of a little bit all right I guess let me think of who what her name is um, the, the one that started getting everybody to use composition Tangy Tangy Baxter was the first person I saw that did composition books where you crumpled up your pages inked them and made them kind of like like this and how you have to do is that Jean? <laughs> that was Lisa. Okay, she well, that was Lisa saying that she yeah she can't get a, a good connection at the lake house. Okay, Lisa. Well, I don't know if you've already left, but thank you again for your the pen. So Tandy Baxter, and this is fun if you just want a cheap thrill. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. If you just want a cheap thrill, fun, get you a composition book. This one is a gridded one, but the line was it doesn't matter if you're just going to be throwing paint and collage and stencil leftovers and whatever. But what she did, 
that I thought was the coolest thing about the whole thing, not just the composition book, was that she would take each page and do this with it. And then open it up and take the ink pad. I just have a black one here, but obviously I use purple and stuff. And you just go over it like that. And that's how you got that back, that cool background. Like that, okay? And then you can add paint and inks and sprays. Uh, you can do, these are great for doing the uh, spray and drag where you spray your inks on a, a craft mat and just go smack and drag. That's what I call it, the smack and drag. I think Tim Holtz didn't, didn't name it that, but he does his tags that way where he just dips them in the ink and drags them. I call it smack and drag. But anyway, <laughs> so composition books like these are great for that. Now, none of these are as big as, let's see, this one's pretty thick. What do I got on this one? Okay, so I do have more collages. I might, I might use this one for a day, a desk journal for a while because it's got a lot more completed type things in there. But none of these are as um, fluffy as Fluffette. Now, those of y'all that don't know, <laughs> uh, I used to, I started out doing I wanted it to be an address book. Let me get some color here so the camera doesn't go wild. I wanted it to be my address book, but it ended up not being that. This was when I, well, this was right before I started doing the All About You collages. And if y'all haven't seen those, I'll, I'll talk about those on another show since I'm kind of trying to stay on the journal uh, topic. But I started to do a, uh, um, composition book with everybody here's favorite color their favorite color combination I was going to do their addresses it ended up I didn't use it as an address book after all but then if I had happy mail that was thin like a letter or a note or an email I would put that in there now obviously if someone sent me something like Eileen's card like this you know that was that's getting a little thick I mean I put a couple of those kind of things in there but not many because I'll show you in a minute why and uh, so I started just keeping everybody's favorite colors and, you know, what they liked and stuff like that. So when I made Happy Mail and things, I'd know what to send them. Well, it turned into, let me move my pencil this way. See if I can get it over here. And this, I also have already started a second one because I ran out of room. Because I think this only holds... I don't know, I think it held, holds 100 people, but I did I did a double page, so it was 100 people in a book. So here is Fluffette. <laughs> it's, it, this is actually a composition book. Flat, you know, it's just a regular composition book that I put scrapbook paper on. But these composition books, now I can't really speak for the tiny ones, which I'll show you next, but these hold up amazingly well amazingly well this is a composition book <laughs> and um so what it's and i'll just show you a couple here uh, just to give you an example for instance here's queen city care here's her double page spread this is the actual all about you collage that i did and when we did the all about you collages they were eight and a half by eleven collages we'd have the person uh would be drawn at random from all the people that we'd put in the bucket, you know, and then we would do a live collage all about you, you know, all about that person. Well, the, I would send them the original, so I have photographs of all the ones that I've done. They are on our Fli Coffee and Art in the Morning Flickr group if anybody wants to go check them out. Anyway, so I would stick that in here too and, and, make, and, and make it a pocket or something, but I would keep their notes their emails or things like that and then like this would be cares co color combination so we did that with uh, about a hundred people until I ran out of room and had to start another one but we kind of stopped it um, after a while I guess we just moved on to other things after doing tons and tons of, uh, uh, of this of all about you but anyway i have a second book it's not near as fluffy as this but i wanted to show you that th that a composition book will hold up immensely for a junk journal collage journal collage mixed media paint whatever 
Okay. And I do not glue, when I work in composition books, people always ask me if I glue pages together. I don't. I don't glue any pages together for the simple reason that because I put so much paint, matte medium, papers, and whatever on each page, they're not that as thin as you think. By the time you paint both sides of a, of a composition notebook page, they're not going to, they're not that thin is what I'm saying. They're not that thin. Um, the first time you, well, let me see, you watched, the first time you watched Dixie was Joycey's page in this book, or when I did her, um, her actual All About You. That's probably what you mean. Let me find, I have a photograph of it. I just got to find Joycey's page here. Let's see. There. Yeah. Okay, so here was Joyce's, I don't have her page glued in, but her All About You page was this with a door that closed over the top. So basically her page was a double page spread, but this was Joycey. So what we would do is we'd ask her questions like her favorite color, her favorite this, her favorite that, and we would get to know the person better by asking them the question. So this was Joycey's, like I said, this this would, this would page was had a cutout that revealed this part of the page. So anyway, let me, let me put her back in her spot. <laughs> um, so you were here for that one, Dixie. There's Artie Dar, there's Joycey. So, yeah, we have quite a few. I mean, I'm just seeing right here, I'm seeing Queen Di, Judy Papercrafter, Shirley, uh, Lori Bear, Joycey, Artie Dar, Laurel, Jelly, J Cats, Lynn, Vicky BR, Vicky, <laughs> Bren, Dreamer B, Barb, Claire, Packer Die, Fiona, Deb Packer, Tara, Mel. Felicia, Karen Kep, Fran, Gina, Dale, Happy Die, um, Susan Ribbons, Graphic Cat, Darcy UK, Nikki Steampunk, Care, uh, IMJ Julie, APG Jamie, Jordan, Jean, Ketsia, Julie Topaz, Linda White, well, Art Unit. We Hootie, Lori Artivity, Julia, Jen. Jen was a fun one. Jen, we did a puzzle. Hers was a puzzle piece. That was a fun one. Um, let's see. MB, Mary D, Julia, Key Margo, Paula. Paula was another fun one. She had a fun all about you. Uh, well, they're all fun in their different ways. Miss Rose, Miss Rose, we did a book pay. I mean, we used an actual mini um, hardback book. Tammy, Rachel, Sandy with the P, Sandy J, Sherry Pink. And this was cute. Sherry, uh, her All About You. It's, where is it? Here. Hers, um, it's in here somewhere. Anyway, um, hers she framed and had on her wall. When she did a tour of her room, there's Tumbleweed Vicky. When we did a tour of her room, she had it framed on her wall. I thought that was so cute. Kimber, Kim, Blade, Amy, Queen Di, Joe, Cheska, uh, Darcy Glam. That was another one. We did a triptych. Oh, it's already glued in. We did a triptych for Darcy Glam. Let's see what else is here. Um, Michelle, Sarah, Eileen, Harmony, Eileen Scrap Pit. Did I say Joe? Mel C, Colleen, Slee, KP, Photo Joy. Anyway, so yeah. You get the idea. I just wanted to say all their names because I kind of miss some of those people. But anyway, so you can see a composition book will hold up well. And for the tabs, I just made my own tabs. I didn't have a punch or anything. I just took a piece of cardstock. It's real easy to make a tab. Um, let me put my little thing back in here. Let me find just a piece. Of, let me just get a piece of paper just to show you. Um, here we go. All you have to do to make a tab like this is just take a piece of paper. This is how I make my tabs. And you don't even have to have a rounder punch. So you have, a, here's a piece of a 
cardstock, or you know, you want it kind of because you want it front and back if you're going to put two different names on it like that. And all I did was just take some scissors and just round the corners like that. So I have a tab like that, and I just glued it on, leaving it sticking up, and painted it to go with whatever. So it's really easy just to make a tab. It doesn't have to be this big, obviously, but I made them quite big so I could find them. Okay, so there we go um, for, for composition book. All right. Um, com speaking of composition books, let me put some of this stuff back on the shelf. otherwise I'll have to figure out how do I have that all fit on there it's not fitting now because I just cleaned this shelf if y'all remember a couple months ago, not even a couple months ago all right so you can also get these small composition books uh, usually the only time I ever find them is like during school year startup where let me take a sip of coffee these are real handy to take with you if you go somewhere uh, I'll sketch in them and then I'll come back and I'll paint in them or whatever. But basically, again, it's the same kind of. I gotta come, remember to come over here. Little collages, little bits, little something left over, and I'll glue it in here and play. So it's kind of the same thing, but they're also good for taking out and about if you want, if you're a note taker or if you're like a smash booker and then you don't want a big smash book. You can do uh, little composition books like this and th throw things in. And if you want, you can come back and collage and paint and play in these kind of little books. But these are just the mini composition books. Now, I will say this about these. These are not bound as well as the big ones. The big ones, I've never had a page just fall out. <coughs> these, they will. They're just not as sturdily made for whatever reason. So in some of them, you'll probably even see where I've taped things in. Uh, if it uh, they start to come apart, I'll, I'll glue, I'll, I'll put some, you know, some kind of washi tape or glue some something in there just to make it so that uh, it, it doesn't fall apart. But anyway, um, th this is uh, the same type of thing. I'll take a little bit of something and play with it and turn it into something. So, but there's tons of pages. See how many pages are in this thing? Here's one where I've just glued some stuff in. I didn't finish a couple of those there. Um, so I'll just I'll just play in these little composition books like this. Um, I've done a few of them. This one, this one really fell apart. I can see where I've had to look. See how they really? I've had to tape that one. But, you know, for what it is, just, uh, just to play in, little composition books like this are fun. Okay. So there's the composition book idea. Uh, any questions or anything? Oh, are links open? Let me uh, see here. They are now. They're open now, Linda. I usually op Carrie, and I didn't know she was going to be here, or Mater, rather. Um, all right, so I also showed you last week, and I won't go through this one again, but I'll just show you the idea. You can take this. This is my Whammo book that I got up for a couple of dollars in the clearance. It's the history of Whammo toys. And what I did is I took the spine off. And you do have to kind of be careful depending on what kind of spine it is. If you want to cut them out with an X-Acto knife or just tear them out or whatever. I, I'm usually pretty careful when I take de-spine a book. And then I just put my own rings in it, chipboard covers, and other junk in there. I, this one I just showed the other day, so I won't even bother to open that one up. But you can take old books like um, this one or... Let me put this back up here. Um, this one, which was a, a scenery, a cityscape book 
that I got on clearance for a couple of dollars. This is the Sean Connery one. <laughs> and um, and it's another one where I can do the reverse collage. These were all cityscapes. And I and I and most of them I use black. A couple of them I use colors. But this one I just whited out the text. But you take a book like this, and what I the reason I call it reverse collage is because I'm getting rid of things. Okay, I'm getting rid of whatever's there. There might have been a whole bunch of people sit, sit, sitting here or something. And I just got rid of it. And you keep what you want to make your pages fun and to play with. So you can just kind of see. I'll just do a quick. Here was a, this was a palaza of some sort with a bunch of, uh, and, I, and they're all over the world. I don't even know where this, the, they're all over the world cityscapes so you can see i just got rid of everything here but you can then the leave the, the buildings but then you can go back and then play in here like i have a little bit of white paint left over here somewhere there it is and you can just play with um paint with what you know with the places that you have left over Oh, who, hi, Jean. Congratulations, whoever got their foster baby. Hang on, I've got, to, I have a big giant, do I have a, here, I've got a fingernail, I have a big chip out of my fingernail here, and my nails are very short as it is. I don't have a lot of room for chippage, because I keep my nails so short that it goes in, as you can see. Anyway, so, um, this one was what we did with a cityscape book. I say we because a lot of this was done on stream. So when y'all hear me say stream, um, uh, we, it's because, you know, on the live stream, we would work on this stuff. And uh, so you can kind of see how you can just take paint and play. Here's another one. See, all, th th these buildings were actually there. And then you just, re, you know, you get rid of anything you don't want and turn it into something else. Let me find Sean in the fountain. So this one we did on stream. I remember this one well because Ustream was being a PETA that day. So this one we did fire and water. So we took this fountain and added more water. This side we added fire. But I'm going to find... So what happened was... <laughs> is uh i had a great picture i love sean connery and uh, i had a great picture of him so we put him in the fountain <laughs> so there he is in the fountain we just cut him out and put him in the fountain <laughs> all right so anyway the point is showing you this book and then here again i just glued a glued and painted a bunch of things on the cover and then i put like on this case i put like a couple coats of varnish so it's, it's perfectly smooth and, and perfectly flat and finished. Okay, so um, anyway, just taking a real book and turning it into a reverse collage. Yes, you helped, Jean. <laughs> I, I think there was only a couple of us that were actually in the, in the uh, chat, the Ustream chat. Everybody else was on Twitter, and that was a fun day. All right, so that's what you can do with a real book. Uh, I've done that. I've got another one going on. Let's see, where is it? This one I'm in the middle of playing with. And it's uh, the book of invention. And it's all the different inventions. So I've been playing with that book. Taking the images and playing with all, <laughs> all the inventions. And uh, so I, I do have that one sort of ongoing. All right, then, let me get that back on the shelf. I have a couple other ones. Are y'all are y'all with me still? Are we are we getting bored? Or I mean, I don't want to say we get bored. I, I never get bored. I I never get bored. Just way too much to do to get bored. But some people just sitting here watching the same thing over and over. It may be kind of let's just say you know not interesting. Uh, this one is my face journal, <laughs> and um, 
this is good for you just to play in something like this. It doesn't have to be like quite as elaborate as this. And I've shown this one on stream too. This was a nicely bound book of kind of like a Japanese paper, but it was so absorbent absorbent <laughs> absorbent that I couldn't really use it for anything ink and everything would just feather so I just used I took it took out the whole book out of it and made my own signatures and just used the cover so what these are is just the cheap Michaels watercolor paper pad like 11 by what would it have been it's, where's my ruler the, the pad itself would have been, um, oops, sorry guys, I just smacked the camera up there, would have been um, 11, 8.5 by 11, I think, sheets of paper, watercolors pad, or 12, 13, anyway, it's that, you know, your small, your average size pad of watercolor paper, but it's the cheap Michaels brand, and I think they were on sale for something like, I don't know, it was ridiculous, like six of them for $10 or something like that. It had to be at least six, because that's how many I have here. And um, so I just took that cheap watercolor paper and folded each one in half, okay, and made my own signatures. And I used, used a lot of glue, basically. I'm not a sewer, but I glued a, a piece of like paper on the spine there and clamped it all down really well. I have a few loose sheets, but it held up pretty good. You could also do the same thing with the rubber bands around the spine if you want to, or if you're a book binder sewer person. But the purpose of this, and then I, and then what I did is I had leftover, what I do when I have my acrylic paints get down to about that much, I kind of keep staying down here. When my acrylic paints get down to about this much, I'll add water about halfway and shake it up, and then I'll have washes of acrylic paint. So that way I'm using up what's left, and I'm also, it's just nice to have some washes. Now I do keep those separate from my full, uh, you know, non-watered down paints, because I've had that happen before. If you ever do it once, you won't do it again. Where you take the lid off and you think you're going to pull pour out a little bit of acrylic paint and it just water everywhere it's because you because you used it for the washes so i either keep them in a separate tray or a separate box or in not this one because i have a dot on here for a different reason but i just keep them separate so that and also if you shake them up you can feel that it's wash real watery but what, what I was trying to get at is that leftover paint as a uh, acrylic wash is good for doing something like this. And what I did is I did like the rainbow, you know, yellow or, or you know, just did the washes. Uh, yellow, orange, pinks and reds and blues and greens and, you know, kind of in a rainbow type colors. And the reason I did that was for myself to be able to keep up with which colors I used. Um, so I wasn't like redoing a whole bunch more yellow, more pink. So it, it took me probably about, it took me a few hours to wash front and back all this paper, this cheap watercolor paper. All right. Um, and I call this my face journal. So what it is, is this is where I'll do the quick sketches and do funny faces. And they're just for play, and they're the, I mean, they're literally 10 second faces that you draw. And then you can go back and you can play and add more things. But basically, it's just to have you loosen up, warm up. Let me get a pencil here. And just, you know, you can have them looking up, you can have them looking down. It doesn't, you know, it's the, just the point to have you just play and just do some quick little faces like that. And then you can go back and, and play and add more detail and shape your faces and do the eyes or whatever. But the point is just to do, here I'll do it on this white one you might be able to see, is just to, you know, really quickly just <laughs> play with some, your shapes and then, uh, you, know, you know, your cheeks are here, your nose is there, your chin is here. 
and that's it. Then you can go back from that and, you know, if you feel like, you know, you want to make something out of that, you can. But that's what this whole book is. It's just those quick faces. Now, this is a long one. You can do, you can do uh, fat ones, short ones, wide ones, long ones, oval ones. You can have them looking up. You can, like I said, you can have them looking down. You just have them looking whatever way you want. But the idea is just to be quick and playful and not be, uh, not be, uh, uh, overthinking it okay so that's what this journal is it's just all quick faces and then you can see here we just took black and white I say we because it was done on a stream and uh, um, and just use black and white paint to to do more on there um, let's see oh we I threw in a bird in there some for some reason but you can see look they're just all real quick more probably in the front because you that are more finished here so you can see we just did real quick fun faces and then you go back and you can play with them and add more whatever detail to them that you want and you see look at all the different expressions you get you just don't over don't overthink it <laughs> you just want to scribble do some scribbly faces and this will warm you up to, you know, your hand moving on the pencil, you know, it, or with the pencil. So just so you can kind of see some of the variety of, of just with a scribble face. The No two ever look alike. They all look different, you know. They just all look different. So anyway, that's my face journal. Um, there's our sunburned girl with the cucumbers on her eyes and the zinc lipstick. Vampire girls. All just all whatever. So anyway, that's the face journal. So you can see that I just call them different things because I use them for different purposes. This could just be called a sketchbook with colored paper you know uh, all right so let's see what else um then we have our notebooks we've done quite a few different kinds oh and i'll do so i'll show you some actual art journals that i do what i do with my art journals let me see if i can put my hand on the napkin journal I kind of have a feeling that it's over there on the floor. But what I do with my journals, and I like to really use um, Canson mixed media journals, but what I do is I de spiral them. I take them out off of the, I take the spiral, the spiral out, and then I just put book rings. And the reason that I do that is because. In the spirals, it gets crunchy and it gets, I don't know. I just de-spiral them and put book rings on them. So I, I don't know how many of these kind I have. This is one that I did. Oh, here's Dolly. Let me go to Dolly here. This was one of the first actual journal journals that I did on stream. And then here is, um, there's a little picture of Dolly. This had the, the uh, Dolly brochures, the ticket when we went. Here's a postcard I had. I think I used to even have the actual little mustache in here at one point. So it's kind, this was kind of a combination scrapbook journal. So you can also do this. Some people also like to call this smash booking, although in smash booking, which I have a few of those too, I don't know if people draw much in them. But I did this little pen and ink of Dolly here. But a smash book is kind of like a combination of art journaling, pictures, ticket stubs, brochures, and all that. It's kind of like a little, it's a smash of everything. You like the face one, uh, Jane? Here's one where I did 
some doors. So this one with these were um, uh, I should I wanted to do a demo on what you could do with clip art because I have tons of clip art books. This is an old one here. Uh, this is one of the first actual journals that I worked in on the Ustream. Um, so I wanted to show what you could do with clip art. So all these doors here, the doors, and the, these right here, this is all clip art. And I printed it out. All I did was print out some clip art on cardstock and then show you how you could uh, color pencil. So all that's just color penciled in and uh, shaded with color pencil so that you could see how to do And the matte paper on the background. What else do I have in here? Um, let's see. Here's another one with the clip art and coloring with colored pencil. Here's some, th th these were our watercolor koi fish. Um, oh, this was for Paula. We did this, a journal artista Paula page. And we also did her a get well page somewhere. I don't know if it's in this book. Um, here's some, I painted some acrylic uh, shoes. Actually, this one was a sketch for, this was when Boo was in kindergarten. That's how long ago this was. When Boo was in kindergarten, or for, maybe it was first grade, um, I did a painting for her her teacher and it had these tennis shoes in it and so this was kind of like a sketch for that um, anyway all right so i just wanted to show you that you can use just this is just the cans and mixed media that have the blue cover on them and i i take the spirals out and just put book rings it's easier to turn it's easier to open there's no stickage from the spirals or anything like that. Okay, any questions before I go to the shelf again? I want to find the napkin journal too because that's a different kind. Um, oh, the notebooks. Okay, so I have tons of these as well that we've done. Um, uh, let's see, which way do I want to go? All right, we'll show the notebooks first. So the notebooks are handy because they're notebooks. So you can do a lot with notebooks. Um, this one we did a couple few years ago. It had to be at least three years ago. And this was a color combination idea thing that we did using different colors as inspiration. I really won't go through all this now. But every one of these is a color themed something. And because there's pockets on front and back to put all your extra stuff in it, it made it really bulky and thick. That's, those are the kind that you really need uh, a ring notebook for when you have a lot of pockets and things for your pages. Another thing that I did with ring is I took a lot because y'all know if we if you scrapbook you know you have a lot of leftover. I took a notebook and I cut it down. All right, this was a three in I think it's three inch, yeah, two and a half three inch, and I cut it down. The reason that I wanted to cut it down was so that I could use six by six, and it's one of these kind of lay flat. It's a D ring so that the cover comes over the top, and so you see it lays flat like that. The, I cut it down to fit a, an exact half of a scrapbook page. Scrapbook pages are 12 by 12. And I, I cut this down to fit a t so it's 12 by 6. Let me stop and take a sip of coffee here. If you have scrapbook papers either that you love and want to keep or hate and just want to use, either way, this project works. You take and you cut your papers in half. All right, I have other things in here, too. I have some ATCs that I did. What else do I have in here? I have quite a few other things in here, too, but I wanted to show you what you can do. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can take your 12 by 12 scrapbook paper, cut it exactly in half, and use a front and a back. So you have one side of your scrapbook paper that is already for you to collage, add more on, journal on, whatever you want to do. Mixed media on the old scrapbook paper. 
whether it be something you loved or something you hated. Okay, but the thing is, is that on the back side, if it happens to be, um, in this case, this is just, that's not the case, but in some of them, they're white on the back. If they're white on the back, you know, if it's not a double-sided scrapbook paper, then you can either paint, collage, or journal on the white page. Most of these, I think, right here, at least at the beginning of my book here, are, um, there's my, there's my Mona, are uh, double-sided pages here. But if, the, if, if it is white on the other side, use that side for journaling. For example, this little Bow Bunny book. Now, this is a, a pre-bought book that you buy with the covers, and it had, I think, six, had six uh, uh, chipboard doors. Let me get to the door. Like this. It had like ch six chipboard boards. And then what I did is I put my own paper in it with scrapbook paper. So I have a white side and a color side with old scrapbook paper. So you can use this kind of book for journaling. Okay? Because half the paper is white and half of it is ready for collage or whatever. You can kind of see. Well, that's the same thing with this. Except this is a full page is cut in half. Okay, so I've got tons of things like that in here. You can also put pockets. All right, the, and all this is, like I said, it's just a big three ring binder that I trim down and put duct tape along the edges because you're gonna see that uh, core inside there. Uh, I have tried to take the plastic off of these. It's no fun, just trust me. Trust me, you don't want to try to take the plastic off. It is no fun at all. And then you've got to figure out how you're going to re recover the whole thing. It's best just if you want a smaller notebook, just trim it down with your X-Acto knife and uh, duct tape because the duct tape will stick to the plastic and duct tape the edges. Don't, don't try to take that off. I mean, you can, but be warned. You, you won't enjoy the process. Uh, so I have all different kinds of just, you know, different kinds of scrapbook um, paper, and I have some journaling in there. I even put some of my ATCs in there, um, you know, just different things. This is where I painted. Now, this one I had a little piece of a collage, and then I painted it out. So you can add whatever you want. It doesn't have to just be the scrapbook paper. Here's another one. This one I collaged and then painted and stenciled. This is a little piece of the scrapbook paper left that you can see. Everything else is covered up. So I use the scrapbook paper, you can see it right there, as inspiration for color to add things to. So I add this collaged angel um, a gothic thing here, and then I made my own little hill and things with scrap, I mean with the stencils. So you can do this kind of stuff. Did your mom, did she get a call back from the doctor, Carrie? Is she okay? You can add, this is pieces of, um, you know, those faux ephemera. I have a pocket here. So you can do all this kind of stuff with your um, scrapbook papers that you don't like. More stenciling. I think this was from a Christmas card. Leftover Christmas card. Here's some more of my ATCs just in there. Uh, so you can see how pretty it can be. I was kind of waiting to hear Carrie's update there. I know the chat's lagged. Here's a, this was the back. This was the back, this paper was white on the back. It's the back side of this paper. So what I did was painted it, stamped it, stenciled it, and basically just made my own scrapbook paper. Okay, here's another one of the, this was, a, this was an actual scrapbook paper. I didn't do anything to this. This is just what the paper looked like. 
I just cut it in half. And when you cut it in half, you've got both sides. So if it's a paper you love or hate, either way, you can do something with it because you still have the 12 by 12. Uh, what else do I have in here? There's another one of those bow bunny ones. I'm just kind of skipping through here, guys, just to kind of show you some different things. Pockets. Here's another one where I painted and stenciled on. Here's one where I collaged on. Um, th this is a scrapbook paper right there, just like that. Here's the back white one where I haven't done anything to it. So this was the paper here, and I put this uh, Christmas card left over. Oh, and if you want to use Christmas cards or any kind of card, let me give you an example of that. If you want to use that in collage. All right, for instance, I have these little angel cards. I got these. These are leftover Christmas cards. I like them because they're angels, and everyone's playing a different musical instrument. But what you want to do if you want to use a card is if you want to use in collage, is you want to peel off, just like you would a napkin journal, you know, your napkins, you cut two and sometimes three layers on a napkin. You want to carefully, and I mean carefully, you got to take your time, is peel off. This is a way for you to recycle your Christmas cards, your birthday cards, all greeting cards. So you can just, you know, you can even use that for something if you want. But now you have a thin, something thin, to use in collage okay it's curly now but it, it flattens out so hey Anita K so if you want to you keep your birthday Christmas anniversary whatever kind of greeting cards because you love the picture the, what I do is I'll so in this case I just bought this pack of cards because I like them I, not even for Christmas cards I just like the images they look like stained glass angels but peel off that layer, and then you can use it in your collage without bulk. It'll lay flat, and you won't have any bulk. You'll, you're taking off four layers of paper, you know what I mean? And also, if you do keep your images, um, and, and you love your cards, and, and because so-and-so gave it to you, you can always cut out the sentiment and do the same thing. Peel off the sentiment and keep that. And also always, especially if it's an old person that you want to, you know, have their hand, their handwriting, if they wrote anything or signed it in their handwriting, keep that. At least a few of them. I, like, I'm so happy I kept my grandma's signatures and notes and things, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, so there's that idea right there. So basically... This whole thing has, I don't even, can't even tell you how much that is. But that's, you know, a, a good three inches of paper in that notebook. So all you do is just get you one, you know, these are old school notebooks. You can get these at yard sales for like 50 cents. Buy them, wash them, cut them, duct tape them. <laughs> and uh, so there's that for an idea. Hi, Eileen, and anybody else I missed coming in? All right, so that's some ideas you can do with notebooks. Of course, there's always the smash books. Y'all know I just talked about that. If y'all don't know what a smash book is, I think I have one that I haven't deconstructed yet. I usually deconstruct my... But the smash books, yeah, this one I've deconstructed too, but just so you know what they look like on the cover. And they have a plastic cover over them, but I've already taken this one apart. So anyway, um, but they're K and Company smash books. And what they have in them is all kinds of um, different, uh, see, I've got half of this is all taken apart here. Uh, <clears throat> they'll have different kinds of pre-printed papers and ideas for you to write in, glue stuff in, collage, you know, whatever. Just That's why it's called a smash book. So I have a few of those. I, I usually buy these kind of things because I like the papers in them and I want to take them apart. So I have quite a few of those. Um, there's another uh, composition book. So here's an example of what I do with my smash books here. So uh, here's one of my smash books and there we go. So you can see I, I really do smash in them, but they're usually not like, they're never flat or there's way more in there that needs to be, but there's one of those smash books uh, like that. 
The other thing that you can, oh, I got, there's four more composition books right there. Okay. Um, how I do, let me try to show you this real quick. And I'm not one to, I've told you all this before, I'm not one to do diaries. I tried to do a 12 month, I made it and I have it right there, I'm looking at it now. It's like eyeballing me back. It's giving me the hairy eyeball. I took a 12 month calendar and what I was going to do, I forget somebody had it online or something about taking a 12 month calendar and backing it with a nice scrapbook paper, which I used a nice pad of basic gray. This was a few years ago. This was before I started streaming, I think. And, um, and so I made me a nice big 12 by 12 calendar glued down, you know, the little, the little squares, the little, you know, a regular size calendar with the squares. Glued the nice basic gray paper on the back, punched the holes, put dividers for the month and all that. And you were supposed to put, fill out every square with a little something, a little art, a little quote, a little something. By October, I could not wait for that year to end. I am not, but I was determined and I did finish it because I am not a, <laughs> I'm not a diarist. I do not do well with day by day by filling something out for 365 days drove me crazy now nothing wrong with that i did try to do the documented life i made it through two days i was real proud of myself i love that i love looking at people's pages they're amazing they're gorgeous i get great ideas but to do it every day i cannot do <laughs> yeah really i i'm serious by october i was done so my way of doing a calendar, other than the calendar that's uh, taped up on the refrigerator for just like, oh, got a doctor appointment or got to go to Denise's this day or her our fair is this weekend or whatever. This is what I use for my, every year I do this. Let me see if I can try to, probably won't even be able to close it. Let me just get it over to here. This is the Tim Holtz. Uh, it was made to hold your acrylic stamps and it's a binder okay I'll buy what and you can see here the, the the pack of yearly calendar that I bought did not fit this book so I I went through and punched all my own holes for the year but I like this this was I believe I don't know if it was uh, who made this but it, it was a basically a 12 month see October November so what I do, this is my way of doing a diary. So I will have, like here's, here's the month of October. I, I went through, and I, you have to put your own dates. I went through, and you can see from October 1st to October 12th, I did nothing. Sorry, guys, I got incoming mail. Hang on. I got incoming mail, and it froze me for a second. So from October 1st to October 12th, I did nothing. Nothing worth writing down, okay? Sometimes I'll remember to write the days I streamed. This, these two weeks, I forgot to write down the days I streamed. I try to at least remember to write down the days I streamed. I'll write down birthdays. But what I do is something like this. Um, let me see something I can show you because I don't want to show you any personal. Okay, here's something right here. Let me just put the, turn it over like this. All right, so here's a day. I did write the stream days there. I got in an order from two peas. I kept my two peas receipt. That goes in the book on that week. Whatever else, I had something else ordered. I got a couple of emails there. Oh, I ordered something from Joann's. That goes, so that's how, this is how I document my life. Okay, receipts, emails, that goes in there on that week. And I write down the days I stream or somebody's birthday or something like if the hub's hub stressed go out of town or something. I don't even usually write that. Okay, so here's some nice letters that I got from on my YouTube channel. That just went right in there like this. Uh, so you can see that's that's what I use this book for. This book sits over either on my desk or my drafting table somewhere handy. I have a piece of drafting tape. I have a couple of, of uh 
you know, uh, what do you call it? A clo not clothes pins, a paper clip, some, you know, fancy paper clips here, or something like that. A little Hello Kitty charms just sitting in there. That kind of thing. And then in the back, you can see here is where I will stick anything else I want to keep. That may include my Jenny Jelly picture that uh, Eileen made me, stuff like that. That goes in here as the year. At the end of the year, I take all this out of the three ring binder and I put a big old rubber band around it. This was last year. I'll put some book rings, but this was last year. There's the months are up at the top. So this is last year's, my life last year. At the end of this year, I'll take all this out, put some book rings in it, a rubber band around it, including all of this back here, and then I'll put new pages in here. Even though I probably, look, here's every month that has shows to see, favorite blogs, favorite authors, fall decor musts. What else do they have in here? They have some other stuff too. Um, so they have all these little, I never fill any of that out. I feel no compulsion to do so. I rarely go to a movie. Um, I think the last movie I saw, and that was on, uh, you know, uh, the outdoor screen at Denise's subdivision was Frozen. I just don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't do these things. You know, if I have favorite authors, they're down in my library. I, I just don't write that stuff down. And to feel like I have to makes me crazy. <laughs> okay. And it, that's just too much thinking that I could be doing painting or something. Anyway, not that there's anything wrong with it. Don't email me. If you're one of those people that can do the documented life day by day or any of that type of diary type stuff, good. <laughs> I just am not one of those people. So there's this kind of journaling. All right. The kind of, um, if I were to write anything, let me roll, let me see if I can get back over here. Um, Oh, I got a couple of small journals here, too, that I make. These are just little paper bag ones that I've made. You can also use just small art journals and do the same thing. De-spiral them and uh, do that. Um, so please don't think that I'm, I'm telling anybody how to journal or how not to journal, because that's not the case. I'm just telling y'all what works and what doesn't work for me. Um, I use just the plain black Moloskinas if I want to do any writing. If I'm reading something, I read a lot of nonfiction. If I'm reading nonfiction and I want to take notes, this is what I do it in. I might do a little drawing or a little doodle of something that coordinates with what I'm doing, but this is what I do my writing writing in. Um... When I'm sitting here and streaming and stuff like that, I'll keep something like this with my post-it notes. This is where my daily, whatever's going on, if somebody tells me something, someone's new name, Lisa just wrote me that nice little note, I want to keep it, I'll stick it in there. So this is my, this and something like this are where I keep my ideas for streaming or you know, business ideas or creativity or like when I want to do my PDF book, which I'm still almost done with and just have to scan it. And uh, so anyway, that this is my every day. And this stays right here on top of my washi tape, along with a stack of post-it notes. I'm trying to think of every kind of journaling that is possible that I do. Um, all right, so... Then, uh, I've used a lot of composition books too, like this one here, like I said. This is my like day, this is if I have notes that I'm taking or when I'm online, I want to write down a blog address or write down, you know, some, something y'all say, it goes in that. All right, um, okay, let me just, you lost your idea book, Jeannie? Oh my gosh. All right, the napkin journal. Let me see. 
Right, let me throw these death journals way back up here on the shelf. Maybe. I'm not quite tall enough. There we go. Um, death, uh, napkin journal. Okay. Uh, I'm looking. Give me just a second, guys, because I have a bunch of them down here. So, another journal thing I do, if you don't, I don't know if you want to call it that, but I have lots of portfolios like this. Oh, I think I did put the napkin journal in here. All right. Oh, I I'm glad I just accidentally pulled this one out because I see that's where the napkin journal is. I recognize that right there. If I have oversized, because the napkin journal fell apart, I remember now. Uh, if I have oversized artwork, I'll put them in these portfolios. Now, I can't even lift it up to the camera, but you can kind of see. So things like oversized artwork, I have quite a few different sizes. Um, I do, I'm not really one to keep everything necessarily in chronological order. Um, if, I, if, if I do something large and it needs to go in a you know, 27 by 30 portfolio and it's large, it's 27 by 30 or whatever, it goes in that portfolio no matter what date it is. Now, I do have a whole bunch in the closet. I did pull it out a few years ago, some of the old artwork I did from like all the way back from like high school. That's in the closet, and that's all that artwork that my girls make fun of me. <laughs> all right, so here we go with the a napkin journal. All right, and some other things are in here, too. I see this right here. I'm not even sure what all is in here. Some faces in there, some other stuff. Okay, so let me see if I can make room here. Let me move this desk journal off of here. Is any of this helpful or interesting or informative or necessary? <laughs> because I don't know. Y'all probably have a ton of ways to keep your own journals. And this all just may be very redundant. Okay, so Linda, finally the napkin journal. But let me get past some of this other stuff here. Okay. The other thing, too, is right off the bat, Paula, do you recognize? I don't know if Paula's still here. Do you recognize this, Paula? This is the one with the glued stencil. <laughs> There's the glued stencil. When my stencils, now, I, and this was even before I had a paper cut, you know, before I had uh, Her Majesty Camille, the Silhouette Cameo cutting machine to cut out paper, when I just use regular stencils, when they get crunchy, old, and crusty, and I can't even get the paint through them anymore, I'll glue them in a journal, which is, Ah, yes. Now, I'll show you while I'm here, while I'm in this, this big book here, um, an example of what you can, what I do with my collage. Okay, so not only do I just have fun making collage and mixed media, you can see here, this is collage, that's collage, this is paint, there's a piece of collage, there's paint and stencils, there's the actual stencil. <laughs> But what I'll do, if I can put my hand right on it, I've shown an example of this a million times, but I don't think I've shown this one recently. Let me see if I can find it right quick. Okay, here we go. I keep all this together to, as an example. All right. So I might like, let me remember what part I did like in this. Okay, I might like, this section right here, let me kind of pull this whole thing down. This is just an old portfolio that got too thick, so I just cut it down the middle and duct taped it because the portfolio would only hold that much paper, and I got about that much stuff in here. So I just sliced down the middle of the portfolio and just duct taped it, like so you can see there. Oh, there's those, there's my charts. I was wondering where I stuffed those. My, um... <laughs> Uh, neo color charts so you can see I just duct taped the spine there all right so let's say on this collage here's another uh, thing about when you do things in your art journal and you might just like a section of it well don't think that you can't either cut that out just cut it right down if that's all that you like about the piece see I don't have any compulsion or any um, problem 
tearing up my books, cutting them apart. If I find something in any of my journals I like, I'll rip it out and use it. I, I don't feel precious about them to the point where the, if I can't use it, then it's not my, no longer mine. If I'm too afraid to use my own work, whether it be to cut it up, tear it up, slice it up, photo part of it, and use it for something else, then something's wrong. Because <laughs> it's my stuff and it's my work that, you know, you put your heart and soul in. If you can't use it for whatever you want, then it's no longer yours. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So here's one of the collages that I did, and I liked this section right here. So what I did is I took a photo. Oh, do I not have that photo? Rats. Is it on? Oh, here it is. Okay. So I photographed that section. Okay. Here's the photo of this section right here that I liked. So what I did is I took that and turned it into a painting, okay? So this section right here that I liked, I turned it into a painting. And this is just on a canvas board, yeah. So, and it's, this is just acrylic, and so you can just kind of see there. So you can use different things that you work, you do, for other purposes. That's my point of that. All right, so that was just happened. This just happened to be in here. I'm glad I came across because I didn't know where this thing went. All right, so now onto the napkin journal. This journal was never bound. It was a glued, handmade journal. I hope y'all can see. Can you see okay? Let's see right there. This journal was, uh, I had just cut my own paper, and, and I'm not a book binder, I, and I do not sew. Uh, I don't bind, I don't sew, I don't, you know, I mean, I've done a few, but it's rare. And so I glued. And, but eventually I did so much work in this napkin journal that it was really falling apart. Now I do have to say, it's some of it, I remember from the last time I showed it, is out of order. So I'm going to have to kind of finagle it a little bit because some of it's out of order. I don't even remember what the thing was. Okay, I got all kinds of collage stuff in here. These are all collages that we've done on Ustream that were large. Okay, what time is it anyway? Let me double check here. We've been streaming for... Okay, we've been streaming for two and a half hours. So I'll probably have just enough time to finish this. Oh, I had so much other stuff I wanted to show you, but we're not going to get to it today. I'll try to remember where I left off. So we can continue showing different ways to do journals because I can see I got at least 10 more ways, at least 10 more ways. But we're going to we're going to get stopped here pretty soon. I mean, Ustream gives us three hours and uh, sometimes it's a little less for whatever reason. So we've been here about two and a half hours. So for those of y'all watching and thanks everybody for being here live. If y'all are watching this on a recording, then it's a live show. I'm, I'm sitting here doing this live with the live chat for three hours. <laughs> uh, yes, this, this is just a, one of these portfolios, one of these uh, canvas portfolio, I mean uh, chipboard, and I decorated it myself. But because, and it's got that black, see, it's got that black cloth binding, which is very sturdy. And it worked great, but it wasn't thick enough. So I had to, you know, it was only that thick and I needed this much room. So I just sliced down the, the portfolio and duct taped it so I could put more in it, basically. All right, so let's get back over here to the napkin journal and whatever else is in here. So anyway, what I was saying is thanks, guys, for being here. So if, if the recording just stops, I, I just want to tell everybody thank you for watching. And uh, yeah. All right, so the napkin journal is taking a napkin. Let me try to just get one out of the drawer or something here. Let me just find one here. Okay. It's when you take these decorative napkins, and I know everybody here probably has seen this done, but we'll, I'll just show it real quick. And what you do is I just take my pokey tool, and you just catch up the first, usually it's two layers two layers of paper. So like here's one layer, actually that might be two, is that one? And then there's usually a second layer as well. You gotta be careful, you can do it with a pen. I, my pokey tool's covered with paint, so it's probably not the best thing to use. But you just wanna catch up that other 
layer of paper because the reason is there's two reasons one if you don't take that these paper layers off when you glue them down with matte medium if you have all these layers on you're just gluing this so if you're just getting glue on that you're going to have there's going to be like air pockets in between those layers. So you want to take off all the backing off of a decorative napkin. The other tip I can give you when doing any kind of napkin art or, you know, in, in on a, whether it be in a journal or just on a page or whatever, is to do it on a white paper first. So in other words, don't start like, like you see this, there's a brown in there or rust color. If you, you want, let's just say you wanted the background rust color, but if you painted the rust color first and put this on, you will lose the vibrancy. I'll give you an example. All right, this is a lizard and crimson, but you'll get the same idea. If you started to paint the whole background here, the color first, Hang on, now i got to dry that real quick. Uh-oh, hang on. I'm going to pull this over out of the way. All right, let me get my heat gun real quick. I just want to show you this example, because it's really obvious when you do this. Crunch back up. My uh, chair is broken. For most of y'all already know that. Bye, Jeannie. All right. So here is this napkin on white. So you can see how the color is vibrant and very crisp. But look what happens when you put it on the red. Look. Can you see the difference right there? From there to there. See how you lose that vibrancy and it dulls down that white. See. So you always want to start, see the difference right there? You always want to start with your napkin being on white, if at all possible. Because then you don't lose the vibrancies of those pretty colors. Okay. You going to stream after me, Carrie? I'm almost done here. Do, do you want to announce that you're going to stream? Because I didn't see it in caps, so I missed it. Okay, so you want to do that. You want to make sure that it's on white. All right, so there's that tip. There's my napkin journaling tip. That and taking off the two layers of whatever. Okay, all right, so here we go. So this was... A double page spread, and I got to remember because it was, uh, like I said, I took it out of the journal. Here we go. This is what it looked like. So this is a stencil. That's a napkin. The flowers are napkins. The black and white stuff here is a napkin, and this is the edge of the napkin. And the rest is paint. Now you can do this like this, or you can journal in it, or whatever else. I just like I said, I'm not really a writer in this. You can see some drips that we did. And I say we because we did it on a live stream. I, I did it, no, not today. Oh, before your trip. Okay, thanks, thanks, Carrie. All right, so this page here is somewhere in there. Like I said, somehow some of these got out of order because, all right, so here was the next one. All right, so are you still with us, Linda? <laughs> Okay, so on this one, I'm trying to remember what part was the napkin. It could have been, I'm not sure, on this one, because I really tried to blend it in. This is a collage item, this is a cutout, and this is a collage bird. Stencil, 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 and stencil. All right, here is... Uh, and there again, I'm trying to remember if there was a napkin on this one. There's a couple in here that are just more stencil. 
Okay, this is a collage item. That's a collage house. The owl and all the clocks and compasses and gears are stencils, and the rest is just acrylic paint. Okay, all right, this one is, there's a napkin under there, but I can't remember if it was a tiger. I think it was a tiger print under there. And then you can see the stenciling and a collage and a watch collage. All right, this one, the napkins were this flower, this flower, um, this flower. The butterflies were cut out and collaged on, and then stencil was added, and then paint. So are y'all able to see the whole thing? You've never seen this one, Janet? Okay, well, this one's, a, this one's an old, this is an oldie but goodie. Okay, the next one is my favorite. Uh, and I know most of y'all have heard the story. I, I, I love striped t-shirts, and uh, so when I showed Hubster this one, he said, he asked if this was supposed to be me, because the, they had striped shirts on. It's Tweedledee and Tweedledum. <laughs> and I said, what are you trying to say? So in this one, I did an upside down Alice in Wonderland over here, and a right side up here. So I'm not remembering if there was napkin on this or just the this was a calendar page and then we did stenciling clock collaging and paint <laughs> i know so you see the mushrooms are upside down purposefully on this side all right this one has a lot of napkins this one has now there's the magazine girl but then we have this is a napkin that's a napkin this is a napkin with three different napkins on this one this is a thing of candy out of a magazine, and then there's her, and then we just painted all over her, and then turned the butterfly wings to drag across the page, and then the rest of the blue is stencil. So you can kind of see we just painted in. I, when I say we, it's because I feel like when I'm doing a live show and y'all are here and we're gabbing and talking, it's we. So that's, if anybody's saying, why is she saying we when she's the one that did it? Because that's why. All right, uh, there's a little bit of napkin back there. So you can kind of see, and then the rest is painted and blended. Here's another one, napkin, napkin. This was a uh, faux leaf, and then we used it as a mask. Uh, butterfly wings, stencil, napkin. So you can kind of see how you can take napkins and play with them. This one I remember because Colleen was the one that gave me this napkin. There's two napkins here, this one and this one. And then what we did is there's a little Alice in Wonderland here going through this gate. And then th these gates were already on the napkin right here. So this is little cutouts. These are little cutout uh, birds. So I put one on each side of the, and you can see this is where the middle was, you know, when it was glued together. And then this, this is all hand doodled moss. You see the little moss there. You should get credit. <laughs> well, I give y'all credit. Here's another uh, Alice. All the napkins, all the poppies are napkins. And then painted out a little path thing going on here. And then I just put one of my hand carved bees right there. Um, this one is my muse page. There is my muse, Mona. She's in a cage. I have her cage, but if you notice, there's she can get out anytime she wants. Right there. This is a, this was a cutout. That was a, a die cut, the little bird cage. And then this was a bracelet or a necklace in a jewelry magazine. And I just looked like it would be a good hanger for the bird cage. These black or uh, these sepia pictures right back here and back here is a book that, from uh, 1930s Prague that Miss Rose sent. So I love the sepia of it. So I use that as kind of like a backdrop and then stenciled the, some more like, look like ironwork, all that stenciled, then painted this, stenciled that, painted and did stars and painted all that. So these are, mo you know, they're double page spreads because they were in the, napkin journal and then here you can see some different cutouts that stencil there's my mona 
This is all painted, painted, stenciled. So, okay. This one was the fall, um, fall harvest page that we did. And napkins were the leaves and the, the fruit. This was cut out, cut out, stencil, stencil, leaf, napkin. Okay. Here's another one with a big butterfly turned into. Now you can see this kind of. This is where the page got torn when the book came apart. But uh, took her and turned her into like Mothra. <laughs> so anyway, here's her face, and just I just made like how a moth has those feelers, those furry feelers. I turned her hair into that. And then this is a stencil, used a brick. This is a stencil. This is a brick stencil. Did a couple of colors with that. And I used, what we tried to do is use any of the main, you know, like this image here to make that the main color. So her wing comes across over this way and turns into a staircase. So you can see that her wing goes right up into a staircase there with brick stencil. Okay. This one is my Dar Fairy Forest. Um, I just called it my because Dar was at the time she was the one that I knew like little the little fairies. So these are fairy stickers, and I put them in a little world here. <laughs> and the napkins are these trees. These these trees right here are napkins. And then there's other things added. I made a bridge like kind of coming across here with clothes pins and then there's the little fairies are all like just in in different places in the little world so you can kind of see that see how it has like a bridge coming across there okay this girl is not a vampire her lips got peeled off a little bit all right, so in this one, that's a napkin. The black and white here is a napkin, and that's a napkin. The rest is paint, and I love this gold paint. So we just, because it looked kind of like an Asian theme, I just hand drew some um, uh, bamboo stalks and leaves. And her little lips, bless her heart, just got peeled a little bit. <laughs> but she uh, wasn't intended to be a vampire. Kind of ended up looking that way. But anyway, so, and that's that gold, love that paint. It's, I need to see if they even make it anymore. I'm at the last drop of it. It's the Liquid Tech Soft Body Iridescent Bright Gold. It's this gold. And it's, this is the brightest, shiniest gold. If you can see that. Let me see if I, there. Look at that gold. It's just so, sh there we go. It looks like gold leaf when the light hits it just right. All right, so... This one was all the chrysanthemums and flowers were napkin, uh, except the, these were stencils right there. And I just wanted something bright and cheerful that day, so we did look on the bright side. So you can kind of see that. This one's not done. I, I did leave a few of them undone so you could see how you can take the napkins and the collage and the stencils and it was a different progression of the blending. Same for this one. Okay, so this one, I think this this was the back page of another part. Um, this is a napkin. Somebody wanted me to just do some calligraphy, so I just wrote become. There's another half to this, but I'm, it's in here somewhere. And then the poppies are napkins and stencils, and there's a butterfly. So just so you can kind of see the different things what did I make you buy? <laughs> I just saw that. Dee made me buy that. What did I make you buy? <laughs> uh, no. Hashtag just ask ET. <laughs> Eileen's the enabler. All right. So anyway, I, I'm not sure if that's all. I think that's all of the uh, napkin journal. Although I'm not sure what all's in here. There's, these are some different collages that are oversized, 
Oh, wait, there's more napkin journal down there, I think. No, that's just more journaling stuff. So let me see what I got here. I do know that, because I'm going to run out of time, so I'll just keep going until we run out of time. Here is the uh, my uh, ink tints and my Neo colors. I think that's it. No, these are just the ink tints. I'd made charts for them all. What was this one? So different charts for the different things. So let's see what else I have in here. Oh, here's where I showed y'all how to make a grid. Oh, what else do I have in here? Here's a tall collage, just a skinny tall collage. Um, there's this was called my blue bird of happiness. We did that on this little collage we did on a stream. Here's uh, what else? Let's see what else. Here's partial collage. Oh, here's a there's a color pencil drawing that we did. This was uh, done showing you how to do a pencil color pencil on black paper. Hang on. Hey, can I call you right back? Yeah, I'm almost done. All right. So I this was I set I actually set this this stuff out in front of me and and drew from life. This was like a, you know, still life. So I put all this stuff out in front of me and we did this one with colored pencil. A wire ribbon, couple pair of scissors, um, pinking shears, buttons, a thread and needle. So this one was a, this was a life drawing. Bye, Nita. Uh, I'm trying to see what else I got in here. What else? Here's, a, oh, this one was a cover for another journal that I deconstructed. There's another Whirling Dervish in there. What else do I have? I'm just kind of flipping through, seeing if there's anything else interesting. I don't know. A lot of, a lot of just junk and sketches and just things that were oversized that I have in here. Let's see what else. I don't know what we were doing with this little guy. He's a little duck. <laughs> uh, some larger collages. These are some bigger ones and smaller ones. And This one we did, I wanted to show how you could just use three colors. We did pink, black, and white. Here's these, a couple of these are on my, uh, these are on my blog. I mean, my, uh, on my Ustream slideshow. That one's on there. So just so y'all can kind of get an idea of other things that you can I turned this one into a painting. All right, so anyway, guys, this is just some different collages that I've done over the years. Mix, I call them mixed media because they're not just collage. There's more paint than anything, you know. I love this one. I call that one All the Marbles. That one's on my slideshow. So these are like uh, about 11 by 14, so they're kind of larger. That's why they're in this bigger journal here. Well, anyway, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed. Hope y'all enjoyed just doing a little bit of flipping and talking about art journals and different types of art journals. Um, any questions or anything before we go? Because I know we're about out of time. We have maybe five minutes or so. So yeah, this is another way to keep, if you don't want to do an actual journal journal, then you can use loose papers and just keep them in a portfolio like this. I can't even show you the whole thing. There you go. Um, 
I do have a whole bunch of other ways to keep journals, but we're running out of time, so we might have to do that another day. Um, you can keep portfolio. You can take photos. I mean, most of my my artwork I just keep on digital. But if you want to print out photos, you can keep notebooks and ring binders for that, uh, or small ones. I have small ones and three by you know eight and a half by eleven. Um, I'm trying to see. I know there's a couple other main. Oh, don't forget about the file folder journals we've done. I'm just looking up at the shelf here. Uh, handmade ones with chipboard and your own pocket pages. And then, of course, I got tons of the de-spiraled ringed ones that we can show another time. So anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed a little bit of a journal flip and journal discussion. Thanks, Paul. I didn't even get to really show y'all any, many of the, um, you know, like spot, you know, just regular, regular art journals, like, you know, that I've de-spiraled. This one was from 2011. This, now, they're not, they're kind of, you know, they've been through a lot. They're not, they're not really sticking. Nothing's coming off, but they've just been in, uh, smashed you know next to others so long i haven't taken these out in a while there's tweets that we did all the all these were done on on uh on streams this one, like i said this one's from 2011 but anyway guys so uh we'll, we'll let you go hope you're not uh, a bird uh, you know some people don't like to hear crunching and snapping and this this is we did a lot of theme themed pages. This was an Asian theme. Uh, I don't even remember all the themes that we did, but anyway. All right, guys. Well, thanks for being here, and uh, we will see you all probably. At, at Paula, are you going to stream this week? Oh, you're welcome, Linda. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Get some ideas. Get some inspiration. That's what I hope for, you know, on the streams is to get y'all, get y'all, wait a minute before you go. We know what we want. We got to get you to do. Hang on. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> so everybody, <laughs> everybody get crack a -lockin'. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Bye, guys. <laughs>